You got the basic of events. Now let's show the second part of events, and that is the first and only parameter that they give you called an event. So let's actually put the parameter in there so we can hear about it. And I put a comma here so I can actually iterate on that object inside of Chrome here and play with it. Notice I don't have to change any of my code. It's just if you have it in there, it'll pass it. It always passes it. All right, so let's make the code basic here. Let's go back to log because I want to use a secret feature of it that allows you to pass a second element with a comma and actually see that object traced out in your console and you can play with it. It has little arrows that shows you the properties of it and things like that because we want to see what is this event thing right here. So if I refresh the page and click, you can now see this click has something called a mouse event. Now there are a variety of types of events. There's mouse events, keyboard events, whatever else. JavaScript being a typeless language, meaning that a variable can be anything, surprise, right? It still has event types. So you can have mouse event, keyboard events, and each one has different properties. So for example, keyboard events are going to have the type of key that's pressed, whereas mouse events are not. They're going to actually have X and Y locations of where the mouse was pressed, where the touch event occurred, things like that. So you will have whether the alt key was pressed in the mouse event, because you may you know, want to do an alt click, right? Things like that. Um, and key code and things like that. All we care about usually for mouse, mouse events are the X and Y locations of where things were clicked and if a key was held. So if you want to do an alt click or a mouse click or a control click, you can handle this kind of things, right? So anytime I click, it's going to have, as long as the event doesn't change, right, it'll give an X and Y of where I actually clicked on the item, on the screen on the relative space that it actually occupies within a div, right? All those things are calculated for you, and the events is given to you for it. Now, on click, on click events, on uh, keyboard, on mouse down, they all get one and only parameter of event. So every single um, event handler, this is the API. It always has one and only one parameter, in this case, event. So that's the API of events. I add event listener for the event, and any handler is going to get one and only uh, argument. And that argument will be the event that occurred. In this case, for mouse down, it's going to be a mouse event as well because it's a mouse-related event, right? So mouse event. And if you look down at type, you can see it's a type of mouse down event. Whereas even though this is a mouse event, the type of event is actually a click, right? So different types. Same event type, but different type of event. So you can di differentiate between a mouse down event and a mouse up event and a click event and a mouse over event. Make sense? So type will give you an indication of what type of event occurred. These will match whatever type of event you're listening to. Okay? So that's a basic. Let's play with this. Let's see how we could actually utilize these events. So I'm going to change this up here. We're going to make it a canvas. Go back to canvas. My canvas. Your canvas. Everybody's canvas. Say width equals 640. Height equals 480. Because that is the 90 size. Okay. Let's go back to click here. Get rid of mouse down. I'm going to keep it simple. Keep it simple. So a lot of different properties here. X and Y. Let's just play with X and Y. Let's draw a circle or a square anytime we click somewhere so you can recognize how you identify these X and Y and actually apply it and wire it up to an event. So we have an interactive application, okay, driven by events. So in this case, we're no longer dealing with button. We're dealing with my canvas. And from this canvas, we want to get the context or drawing context because there's multiple types of contexts. In this case, we're just dealing with a two-dimensional one. So context is the way you interact with the drawing of Canvas. If you don't remember, refer to my Canvas videos. They'll remind you on how this stuff works. Again, there's a lot of libraries that abstract this stuff. We're going boilerplate. We're going low level. We're going basics. We're going old school. And it's not really old school because, like, it's kind of new as far as web You know what I'm saying. So we'll say get context 2D. Oops, I mean my canvas.getContext. There we go. And all good programming, you should constantly recompile just to make sure that it's recompile. You should constantly refresh to verify your code's working. Okay, cool. So I got a canvas rendering context to the op, op, bleh, whatever, some weird object that allows us to draw. So let's wire this up. Let's put these guys up here just to make things in order. Right? Anytime we click, we want to draw a red box. 
Why red? Because it's the color of passion, of blood, of strife, hard work. Blood, sweat, and tears, man. That's what programming's about. Once you power through, you know, you just get better and better. Things get more fun and more fun. It's like a constantly rewarding cycle. That's why we do it. It's the opposite of doing drugs. <laughs> we'll take uh, context. We'll say fill style. In this case is pound. That means hexadecimal color or really big number. Zero, zero. I'm sorry. FF, zero, 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 zero. You can remember these. Each zero represents a color. That's how I remember it. So, for example, red, green, blue, or RGB, also known as red, green, blue, right? The three colors from a light perspective that mix and match and make all other colors that we can see. I always do FF, right? That means as much color as possible on red. No on green and no on blue, which makes red, okay? We're doing it as a string for now. Then we're going to do a fill rect of wherever we clicked, in this case event X, event Y, and then we'll make it, I don't know, 32 pixels. That's a good number. Let's add our event listener. My canvas. Just kidding. Add event listener. Click. On click. I like to use on. It kind of follows the same standard with a camel case style of on click or on mouse press or on keyboard press or on something. On denotes an event callback handler. It is a convention. It doesn't mean anything. You can write whatever you want. You can write cow, cheese, with underscores. Doesn't matter. It's just if you see an on something, you can usually imply, oh, that must be a callback handler for an event somewhere. So as your code grows larger, these kind of conventions pay off dividends. Okay. If you don't know what a dividend is, ask a banker. Let's refresh the page. Now, anywhere I click, right, you'll notice it's by the cursor, okay, or actually the bottom right of the cursor. So see, we can constantly click and draw. So that's how you make an interactive application based on your square. Now, how do we get it to stop painting everywhere? What we can do is every time we, before we paint, can do a clear rect. I want to clear the entire page. My canvas, not my canvas. Refresh the page. Right? And it looks like the square is moving around. So again, it's, it's kind of like, you know, a game or something. You can make a game like that. Hopefully you use a library to abstract a lot of this stuff. But that's the point. Again, it's event driven. We can also say make it green if you're holding down the alt key. So we'll say if alt key is true, context fill style equals no red, all green, no blue. Else, I want it red. No, sucker, I want it red. My wife's been watching way too much True Blood. So I click around, as soon as I hit the Alt key, it makes it green, I let go of the Alt key, and it's red again! Make sense? So that's the basics of using events. Mouse events have certain keyboard events as well as location of where you clicked, and there's a variety of different ways we'll talk about in advanced gaming stuff for what these different X values of X versus Client X versus Window X versus blah blah blah, all those context means, right? Keyboard has the same thing. It has a lot of like whether you click the alt key, what key did you click on, right? Which is a numeric code. There's other events for geolocation and web workers which handle certain information about the event. So that's the basics of utilizing event callback handlers.